So because architecture and the process of designing is so similar to the democratic process of, of politics, and just as messy, I might add, um, it's a wonderful way of organizing a community to embrace change. But that notion of choice is rarely a part of what we see in the public arena. When we, the public, see um, the proposal, the choices have been made. And we're generally presented with one choice. And we know that that's not the way you design. We know that there are in, 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 in numerous choices that were left on the table. Well, if you use those choices to engage the general public, what you're doing is building their capacity to accept change and to receive some new learning that's necessary to kind of make the right choice. And that's what I mean by um, design being kind of a democratic process. You know, your interaction with architecture can either um, uplift you or depress you. Uh, and there are a lot of examples of the quality or reaching a kind of um, excellence, design excellence, that can be very, very uplifting. Um, case in point, uh, going into the metro system of Washington, D.C., I would argue is an uplifting experience. I mean, it, there's extraordinary grand spaces, um, beautifully lit. They create an environment that um, makes the simple act of getting from point A to point B uh, a daily pleasurable experience. Now, juxtapose that to the experience that one might have going into the subways of New York City. Uh, it's quite a different experience. I mean, it's utilitarian, it works, uh, but it's certainly not uplifting. Uh, so design and artistic excellence in design can be everything. It can affect your mood uh, in a daily basis. And so I've seen it in the context of our schools. Um, children who have the benefit of coming to schools that have um, been case studies of innovation, that have the, the newest technologies and thoughts about how um, natural systems, light, air, affect learning, juxtaposed to kids who are asked to learn in an environment that's demeaning, that hasn't been um, renewed in decades. Uh, and I actually think it has an effect on learning. And so um, these are all built environment questions. I, I spent 10 years of my career in uh, Italy. And um, if every day architecture was in the newspaper, it was being debated, it was being talked about, there were community forums being held. If a building was going up, you know, the architect was presenting it to the general public, it was covered in the press. Um, people talked about architecture all the time because it was one and the same with the environment, the cities that they lived in. So yeah, they have an incredible capacity to accept design and they are very design oriented. They see it as um, a part of their quality of life. Now you juxtapose that to how we go about doing that in the United States. We don't have enough forums by which the general public can speak about design and designers can speak to the public about what we do. So to the extent that we begin to be more transparent about how we work and the responsibility that we take, I think the easier it is to get a community to successfully embrace change. In my own experience, uh, I'm, I, you know, I was the mayor of a, a college town, Charlottesville, Virginia, that thought of itself as a nice college town, um, you know, made up of low density development, when the need, our real need was to begin to place things in much closer proximity to each other that would allow people to live a life 
more, a more pedestrian lifestyle. Well, that was a pretty heated debate. I mean, what I am talking about and talking around is the D word, you know, density, and uh, how challenging it was for the community to accept that we might have to grow up if we were going to grow kind of better. Um, well, we had, no joke, hundreds of meetings um, in our community about this. And over a period of two years, um, our community began to embrace um, the idea of a higher density through, uh, throughout our community. But we got a lot of practice. We met a lot. We talked about the issues. And we not only talked about them, but we helped the community visualize what density looked like um, through the thing that designers do best, and that's kind of to render visible um, these concepts. And at the end of the day, um, we embraced it and changed all of our rules that govern development in order to create the kind of community that we want to be. And so often there is a, a gap between what the public values and the reality that they're living. Uh, and the design process is the process of narrowing that gap for them. Uh, and once the gap is narrowed, I think people can make courageous choices. But you can't, you can't have their ideal um, versus their reality being miles apart and accept them, expect them to take the leap. Um, designers as civic leaders um, are generally not um, plentiful. Um, we are changing and understanding uh, how important it is for us to be seen in a civic role in order to change the environments. Um, and so I believe that now there is a groundswell of designers who are looking for some degree of relevancy in what they do. Uh, and I mean as in social and cultural relevancy in the work that they do. Um, and it's like we've, we've all been there, um, but at some point through the process of being educated to being an intern, to being a professional, it gets drummed out of us, and there are a few left standing who've been able to hold on to some of those core beliefs that they, that they all had when they were learning this uh, art. You know, coming into this profession with a desire to save the world and having to be forced to make decisions that are going to serve only for two percent of the world, generally, um, I found that the new generation of designers are refusing that. They are refusing to be put in that box. And I think that's in part what's exciting about this moment. And it's building. Uh, I, see it, I see it everywhere. There are conferences, um, convenings, where young designers are um, coming to talk about this, and there are increasingly more options to them to actually pursue this early on so they don't have to go through a process of disillusionment in, with the profession in order to find their way. They can move from school to an apprenticeship um, that actually reinforces those values that we've been talking about. Uh, and so this is, this is encouraging, and I can assure you when I graduated, uh, that was not the case. That was not the case. It wasn't that easy to make this transition. Uh, and, you know, I took off to Italy as a way to escape <laughs> from having to make the wrong choices. Uh, and that helped me, you know, uh, tremendously to come back, you know, leapfrog 10 years later and come back to an environment with that kind of experience um, as my guide. So I think the generation that's emerging now is. Um, well aware of the challenges and the opportunities um, to make a difference and to choose relevancy um, in the careers that they, career paths they um, take.